So in this uh, quick little pro tip video here, um, I'm going to show you a little bit about scaling, uh, which is one of the features of Synth Squad that I find to be particularly useful. It allows you to take one mod source and control the amount it affects a parameter by another mod source. So probably the easiest way of explaining this is for me to uh, let you hear a, a patch that I'm working on, which goes a little like this. So there's a, there's a lot going on with it, but it's it's kind of like a 303 style patch with a little bit of a modern twist to it. I'll uh, I'll let you hear kind of some FM bass tone here. So it's uh, it's nice and nasty. Uh, but one of the things that I did with this is I I've taken uh, two step sequencers. Um, and uh, use them both for, for different purposes. Uh, one of which, uh, the first step sequencer, which is this one here, is driving the pitch of Cypher. So um, as you can see, it's set to advanced here and to synth one for its output. So it is telling Cypher basically what notes to play based off of the root note that I put in. So with the root note of C, it plays. so on. Um, but the, the other thing that's going on uh, with this patch is um, under engine 2. Well, you don't really see anything right now. I've got it set to a three-step sequence, and there's nothing happening with the pitch uh, screen here, but if you go over to the mod screen, there's um, a really simple kind of three-step variation of, of modulation. Uh, when you go back to the synth window, as you can see, step 2, which is um, the step sequencer's positive output, or just call it the step sequencer's output in this case, is uh, set to affect the filter cutoff. But it's set via macro 3. What does that mean? That basically means that up here, this area I've marked phantom, because I like giving things funny names, um, is controlling literally the amount of step sequencer's mod output going to here. And it's going to be easier if I just uh, take this away for one sec and do it by a constant. So as of right now, step sequencer 2 is um, going to output these variations of a uh, value to the filter cutoff here. So you'll be able to hear it as an absolute, so it's just gonna do the same thing over and over. I'll bring it away so you can, uh, you can hear it without that there. Very audible. I'll bring it back in. Okay, cool. So it's, it's uh, step sequencer two is now affecting the, uh, the filter cutoff again here. But what if I want to do it by a variable amount? What if I want to control the amount that that pattern is playing through the filter? Well, I just I go and down below under via one, I change that to macro three. So now macro three marked phantom is controlling the, the amount that step sequencer two is controlling the filter cutoff. So the difference in result is this. <laughs> So as you can hear, we can sweep through various different sweet spots. Uh, the nice thing with, with doing uh, things like this where you have a step sequencer um, being controlled via a macro is that you can utilize it in other environments here. So for example, in this bit crusher, I've got um, step sequencer two via macro three controlling the frequency of the downsampling. So when I kick macro three in, it is in effect causing the downsampling to uh, vary according to that pattern that I put in, in in the second step sequencer there. Um, just because I I want uh, a very controlled range, um, I've also got macro three uh, doing some things in the bit crusher by itself. It's actually taking the down sampling down a little bit and moving the the bit reduction over uh, without any interaction with step sequencer two. So you can use macro uh, you can use macro sources or mod sources in multiple different ways on the same parameters you can you can scale them via something else and you can also just have them work on their own so when i take macro 3 and drive it down here it's actually um, running a basically a modulation sequence over the frequency of the bit crusher but it's also dropping the bit crusher's frequency just by itself and then there's a couple other kind of little fun things that are going on with this as well including really cool use of the tin can reverb and stuff like that but um yeah, so that's that's a, a a really quick rundown of of scaling your modulation, which is a really fun way to do some kind of in-depth programming. 